Hello and welcome back. So what I want to do today is talk about a piece of equipment I've had around for years now and that I often use in my daily experiments, but something that has also made an appearance in quite a few of my videos. What I'm talking about, of course, is the Analog Discovery 2 made by Digiland. So this is an all-in-one type of equipment, meaning that it has multiple functions. So what I want to do today is look at these functions, see how well they work, and tell you about what makes this thing special for me at least. Now, I would like to point out that this is not sponsored content, I just want to talk about a piece of equipment that I really enjoy using. But at the same time, it's also important to look at the flaws and drawbacks of this thing. Not everything can be perfect all the time, of course. So if you're curious about that and much more, then keep watching. Now, to fully evaluate this thing, we need to separately analyze its hardware properties and the software support, since both of these are extremely important. So let's start things off with the hardware part. What is this thing? Well, if you quickly look on the website, we see that it's a two-channel oscilloscope, it's a two-channel waveform generator, it has 16 digital channels for logic analyzing and stuff, and then there's a bunch of other features behind it. And all of this is bunched up onto an 8 by 8 centimeter PCB, hence the all-in-one name. And since it's so tiny, it doesn't take up all of your desk space. So you can have all these pieces of equipment in a single tiny little box and well, it's quite helpful if you don't have a garage or some extended place to keep all of your electronic stuff. But before you think this is the answer to all of your problems, let's look at some of the quirks and limitations that such a compact device ends up having. So first, let's look at some of the actual components used. So if we look at the PCB of this thing, we can see that most of the components are made by analog devices, but even better than that, we can take a look into the datasheet. So one of the greatest things about this product is the documentation behind it. So we can check out the analog discovery reference manual, and other than the block diagram behind this thing, we also get a full schematic with some explanations about how and why it's built the way it's built. So the schematic is split up into the various blocks present in the device and every single detail behind it is provided. So down to every single decoupling capacitor that all of the components have. So this level of detail is extremely rare in modern day commercial products. But it's important to mention that this thing was primarily designed as a teaching tool. So a university grade instrument and having this sort of documentation support behind it greatly enhances the experience. So it's very easy to explain how and why this sort of instruments are built the way they are built. And also what are the fundamental components needed. So, so far so good. You've got good quality components and great documentation. So what's wrong with it? Well, the first thing you might notice is the interconnection to the outside world. You've got this pin header which is neither a high speed interface nor a low noise interface, but at least it's a cheap interface. And by default, you'll be getting this sort of wire harness, which is making low noise and high speed even worse. But you can either build an adapter with BNC connectors, so you can build it yourself, or you can buy one ready-made provided by the manufacturer. That will not be perfect, but it will work. And another not so nice feature is a bit more obvious when we look into the schematic a bit. So what I have here is the input stage to one of the oscilloscope inputs. And one of the things you might notice is that there's no input protections. And if you exceed the rated voltage on these inputs, well, you're gonna have a bad time. But at least when you break something, well, you have the schematic there to help you out in debugging and changing out the broken components. So this one time I had quite a high voltage discharge to one of my inputs and well, long story short, this I see on the board did not come with the board. So I had to change it out, but thanks to the available documentation, I knew exactly what component I needed to put there. And well, it works now, so that's good. And another major hardware problem is well, the size of this thing. 
So because it's so small, all of the blocks are very close together and without proper shielding, well, noise can travel from one bit to the other. So if we quickly look at the board, we see our input circuitry right next to some power supply, next to the USB interface, next to some signal processing, and then again close to some power supplies and amplifiers and so on. This is especially obvious with the signal generator and the oscilloscope. So I took a few measurements with this thing, first of all, with nothing connected to it. So if we look at the response of the built-in spectrum analyzer, so we can clearly see the 50 Hz being picked up, but also some other random noise. And if we look at the response over a wider frequency range, so going up to 10 MHz, we can see that this device is picking up quite a lot of noise up until a few hundred kilohertz, and then we go to a lower noise floor. So since there's no shielding provided, well, it's picking up noise from the outside world. And then I connected a cable between the signal generator and the input, so using my adapter board, first of all set the signal generator to 100 kilohertz, and well, although we can see our spike at 100 kilohertz, we also see a bit of crosstalk, so we can see it on the second channel a, a bit, and well, this can be down to my adapter board, but Again, the pin connector interface is not really helping, but we can also see that the channel, channel 1 connected to the signal generator, also has a bit more noise. So even though there's quite a small signal, it's only a 100 millivolt signal being inserted on this channel, we can see that the general noise is higher on the channel with the signal generator than the channel without the signal generator. But you can slightly improve on this by adding a USB isolator, but in the end, this thing would have worked much, much better on a bigger board. So that would have increased its price, of course, but it would also improve on performance. And finally, going over the harder specifications of this thing, you can get far more information on the website, but just the quick highlights, you've got a 100 mega sample per second oscilloscope running at about 30 megahertz. The interesting bit here is that it's a 14-bit input, so most common oscilloscopes only run at 8 bits, it also has an 100 mega sample per second signal generator running up to 12 megahertz. So again, quite nice. Then you got your logic inputs running at 3.3 volt CMOS levels or something else, so 1.8 and 5 volt tolerant. And another thing to mention is that it has built-in power supplies, so variable power supplies going up to plus or minus 5 volts. And these can supply up to about 7 or 800 milliamps if you provide some external power. But in most cases, this will not really be enough. So even here in their presentation picture, you need some extra batteries. So for me at least, the power supply part is something that I rarely to never use. And now considering that it has a $400 price tag, so at the date of recording this video at least, you got to wonder, is it really worth it? Well, based on what we've seen until now, maybe. So now let's move on to the really impressive part of this product. So at least what makes it special for me? The software support. So whether you buy one of these things or not, you can go and download the Waveforms app. So this is the software that supports it. It will work on Windows or Macintosh or Linux or whatever. And this is a free program, so you don't need to pay anything extra for it. There's no licenses or anything. And again, you have a very good documentation support in the form of the Waveforms reference manual. So again, this is available online and it goes through all of the instruments and the features and how to set them and so on. So this is quite an extensive document going into quite a lot of details. So it's quite a good idea to go through this before using the program. And when you turn it on, you can select between your actual device or a demo version of all of the supported devices. So you can try out this program, try out the features behind it without even owning any of the hardware, everything for free. So let's just select this. And now we see here on the left side, all of the functions implemented, so the various instruments that you can use using your device. And let's take them one by one. So first of all, we have our oscilloscope where we can set our two channels, set the various offsets, range, so on, have some time control, triggering, various extra features like FFT, spectrograms, persistence, bunch of features. So you can do almost anything you can with a proper oscilloscope with this thing. You have all of the features built into this program. Then you have some extra instruments that work on the same oscilloscope hardware. So first of all, you have this voltmeter, which is basically an oscilloscope measuring the DC level of the signal and RMS. So you can use it as an oscilloscope or a voltmeter. 
then if you don't like the built-in FFT into the oscilloscope, you have the dedicated spectrum analyzer. So here you can set various features regarding the method of analysis. So what kind of algorithm you want, frequency spanning, settings regarding the channel and so on. Finally, with the oscilloscope channels, you have your data logging option. So again, here you can set the various measurements that you could set with the oscilloscope, including functions, so where you can combine various measurements with various operations, and then simply plot this over an extended period of time to see how your measurement evolves. And with all of the measurements, of course, you have the option of exporting these. So you have all of the measurement points, you can export this as a CSV or something, so the data doesn't just sit in the program, you can export it and do further processing with it. Moving on now to the waveform generator. So here we have the option of selecting one or both of the channels. We can have synchronization or not in between the channels. We can output on the one side simple waveforms, so sine waves, square waves, triangles, and so on. And we have full control over them, so frequency, amplitude, symmetry, so on. But then we have also our modulation options, so we can have both FM or AM modulation or both at the same time. We have the nice option of sweeping a signal, so between two different frequencies. And other things like importing external waveforms, so you can play basically anything you want with the built-in signal generators. So these are quite powerful tools that you can work with. So this makes the signal generator quite easy to use and that's why I always tend to use it. And of course if you synchronize the two channels in between you can insert various offsets, so for example phase offset if that's something of interest or run with synchronized signals of different frequencies and so on. Now for the signal generator you also have a jack output but I honestly never even tried to use it, but it's there. Now moving on to the digital input outputs, so first of all we have the option of static input outputs so we can see our 16 channels, we can set them as an LED, a button, a switch with various states, basically turning them on or off or reading an input state, whether it's high or low. Then we have the option of a logic analyzer. So here we can add various protocols that can be decoded. So there's quite an extensive set of options here. Also with the digital input outputs, we can look over various patterns or over various bus signals and so on. So we have a lot of support also for these logic input outputs. For sending the various protocols, we have again a dedicated tool set for this. So for each of the instruments in this device, there's a lot of options and a lot of settings that you can use to fine tune them to whatever need you actually have. But now comes the best part. So with the analog discovery, other than the various instruments being used by themselves, you have the option of using more than one instrument at the same time with a combined function. So you can use all of these instruments that take control of different hardware at the same time. So I can use my scope and my signal generator and my static IO all running in parallel. But then if we go back to the first page, we have some special instruments that take multiple of these hardware bits and use them at the same time. So the first instrument to talk about is the network analyzer. So this was the main reason why I bought my analog discovery in the first place. So this is an instrument that needs both two oscilloscope inputs and it also needs signal generator outputs. And basically what this does, so you can insert the signal using a waveform generator into a circuit, you measure it using one of your channels to see what exactly you ended up inserting, and then you measure what's coming out at the output of your measured circuit. And what you get is basically a Bode plot. So right now my device is not connected to anything, but on the one side we get the amplitude ratio between the input and output signals, and on the bottom side we get the phase difference between the input and output signals. So this is a very important tool that is needed to characterize things like filters or amplifiers, or even to measure the feedback loops of things like switching converters. So this is the sort of instrument that you don't normally find for low prices. So usually something like this is quite an expensive tool. But yet it's included into the package. Now other things you have are things like an impedance measurement. 
So this is a dedicated tool to measure capacitors and inductors to measure their impedance over a wider frequency range so you can extract how much of the capacitor is capacitive, what's the ESR, what's the series inductance. You also get a nice diagram of how you should be connecting your analog discovery to your measurement setup. In recent times they also added this tracer function. So this is something to measure transistors, whether bipolar or field effects or even diodes, and to generate the various curves characteristic to these components. And well, the final thing to mention is, well, the instrument that can take control of all of the previous mentioned hardware. And this is, in my opinion at least, one of the best things about this device, the scripting part. So now using various pieces of hardware to be controlled by a computer is not something new. You have various programs to control your oscilloscope or your signal generator or whatever through USB cables, but usually every single piece of hardware requires its own special software and it's very difficult to get all of the instruments to work at the same time. With the analog discovery, you have all of the instruments through the same interface. So with the scripting thing, you don't need special software, you don't need a degree in programming to get this thing to work. You also have a nice set of examples and while it's as simple as setting the instrument into the right operating mode and then just running some measurements. And finally you can process the data, save it into a CSV file or whatever. So one of the nice things that you can do with something like this is well automated measurements. You can hook up a piece of circuitry to your measurement instrument, let the program run and then just perform multiple measurements one after the other without touching the thing. So you can have quite a lot of interesting applications with this thing. And of course more information about the various functions and syntax behind the scripting can be found in the reference manual. So here you see all of the functions explained, what are the various ways in which the settings need to be expressed and you also get an extra set of examples. So in the end this instrument has its flaws but it's fully outweighed by the software support and the documentation behind it. So even though it has its limitations as a hobby level instrument or for educational purposes it's more than enough. So it encapsulates in a very small size most of the things that you would normally need and the pieces of equipment that if you would have to buy them one by one well they would cost way more than this thing. Now for me personally this thing is most useful as a signal generator and for its oscilloscope function and well the combined network analyzer function. The other functions I use far more rarely, especially the logic analyzer since I don't really work with logic circuitry that much. But whether you need this or not or for what you can use it highly depends on what you work on. So maybe you don't even need one of these but that's for everybody to decide for themselves. So in the end I will keep using this until I have something better to use and I'm quite happy with it. So all in all, hope you got some useful information after this. Leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be updated with my latest videos, and see you next time. Bye bye.